everybody. I'm Elise from the blog LePetitSaintCrochet.com and today I have a super simple face mask lanyard pattern for you. This is a free pattern for a lanyard or a face mask strap. I'm going to show you how to make it. I'm going to give you the full tutorial. You will also be able to find the printable pattern in the description box below. Actually, no. You're going to be able to find a link to the free printable pattern in the description box below. The reason I actually came up with this super simple face mask lanyard pattern is because I keep losing my masks. I found some really cute little masks on Etsy. I will leave links to these shops in the description box below. I lost one of my very, very favorite ones. It was an orange one. It had cat faces on it. It was so cute and I lost it. And somehow they escaped. They're gone with all the missing single socks. I think they're all mingling together. Then I lost other ones and I just finally decided I'm done. I'm all done with it. I need a way to keep track of these things and I think the best way for me is to just have them wrapped around my neck so that I can't lose it. And we're going to go ahead and get started right away. So the first thing that we are going to do to make our mask lanyard is start with a slip knot and we're going to go ahead and put our crochet hook in and this is the way I like to wrap the yarn around my hand and we're going to start with 125 chains and one of the things that I would recommend is try to keep your tension as normal as possible not too tight not too loose we want to keep our tension the same with our chain as we do with the other rows that we're going to be crocheting Okay, so for our next part of the pattern for row one, we're looking for our second chain. So there's our second one. We're going to place our crochet hook in that top loop, pull through both loops. This is a little trick that I do. I add a stitch marker to that very first single crochet because it helps me to know when I'm coming back that that's the last stitch because that's sometimes where you get tripped up is you don't realize which one is the last chain and nobody wants to go back and count 123. So you're going to go ahead and single crochet 123. So you started with 125 chains but we skipped one which leaves us with 123 single crochets because you do not count the loop that's on your hook. So go ahead and make your single crochets. Again, watch that tension. Try to keep it about the same as the chain. You don't want it too loose. You don't want it too tight because it is going to cause more curling. Now you're going to start to see as you are single crocheting that it's going to start curling up, but we're going to fix that because we're going to block this in the end. That's going to be a really important thing unless you don't care about it becoming a total spiral but that's what we're going to do in the end. So don't worry about that too much. Just go ahead and do all of your single crochets. Now we get to the last chain and we single crochet in that one. So you should have 123 single crochet. Now we're going to chain one and we're going to turn our work. Now that chain one does not count as a stitch. It's just a turning chain and we're going to actually go in to the last single crochet that we made. We're going to go under both of the V's of the single crochet and we're going to single crochet 10 here. 
only 10 stitches because we're getting ready to make our buttonhole. Now for your buttonhole, you need to experiment a little bit if you're not using a 1.5 centimeter button or you have a different type of yarn or a different size crochet hook. So for my tension, my yarn, my crochet hook, and my button, all I need to do is do two chains. But you can experiment a little bit with that and just see, do you need one chain? Do you need four chains? It doesn't matter. So here I stopped at my 10, I chained two, and I'm going to skip two stitches and I'm going to go into that third single crochet and make a single crochet. And you can see we have our little hole there. I'm getting my button and I'm showing you how I'm experimenting a little bit, just making sure that it can slip in and out. You want it a little bit tight because it's going to stretch over time. Now you're going to continue single crocheting for 90 nine stitches. All the information about how to customize the size of your lanyard is in the blog post and actually in the printable pattern as well. So make sure to check that out if you would like to make a larger or smaller lanyard. After you've single crocheted 99, you will have 12 single crochets left. So I'm counting and I'm really glad that I put my little stitch marker there because that really helps me out. So at this point, it's time for me to chain two. And I'm going to skip those two single crochet and go into the third stitch. And I'm going to single crochet and I will single crochet 10 just like we did at the beginning. And now we have our second buttonhole. So now we are on row three, which is our final row, and we are going to single crochet in all 123 of those stitches. And when we get to our chain, we just have to remember that we need to do two stitches into that chain. So you'll see I am making two single crochet in that chain because those were two chains. And then I will continue on with the 99 single crochet that I made between those buttonholes. Now we are getting to our second buttonhole and we're going to do exactly like we did before. We're going to single crochet up to the buttonhole. We're going to single crochet two into our chain stitches. And sometimes that can be a little bit tricky and you got to fiddle with it and make sure you're getting into those stitches. And now you have your final 10 single crochet left. And there's our last stitch, single crochet. And now we are going to go ahead and fasten off and weave in our ends. So you've got your buttonhole there and you have your buttonhole at the other end. And don't worry about the spiral, we're going to go ahead and fix that. So for those of you that don't feel as confident about weaving in your ends, I'm going to show you how I do it. It's pretty simple and straightforward. The best thing to do is just to make sure that you weave in your ends really, really well and you go back and forth several times. That way it never unravels and you're just hiding your stitches. And I learned a lot about weaving in my ends when I became a certified crochet instructor through the Craft Yarn Council. And if you're interested in learning more about that process, I have a video all about that as well. You just keep taking your needle back and forth a couple of times and then just clip it really close while also being very careful not to actually cut your stitches because I've done that before and it is not fun. 
So now we're ready to block our project. It's really twisty and this is not going to work very well. I really highly, highly recommend blocking this. So I am just wet blocking it and I'm just spraying it with water that's room temperature. I have this great blocking mat and these are pins that are rust proof. They're T pins and it came with this blocking mat. I'll leave a link for this in the description box below. This is one of the best tools you can have as a crocheter and you just start pinning and what I love about this is that it has all of the little one inch squares so I can really line this up and get it nice and straight. Now I've placed all of my pins and I'm going to give it one final last squirt of water that way I know it's really nice and soaked so that those stitches can relax and do exactly what I want them to do. Now I'm taking all my pins out and it is nice and flat and it is perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and add my two buttons to my project. Now I don't have the color thread that I want for this. So I'm just using some embroidery floss and what I'm doing is just separating one of the threads and you just pull it out easily like that. And now I actually have a thread that I can use to attach my button and I get one of my actual sewing needles so it's nice and sharp and there's a small eye. And let's see if I'm able to thread it easily. The older I get, the less I can see. I don't knot the end of it because we don't really need it. And all I do is I just add it right to the end here because it's going to go right like that into the buttonhole. This is a one and a half centimeter button and I just leave a long tail in the back because I'm gonna trim that up. And I'm not going to demonstrate how to sew on a button because I pretty much figure if you know how to crochet, you probably know how to sew on a button. I just wanna share with you really quick, Anna from The Naughty Boss is actually doing something so wonderful for all of us. This is her mask lanyard printable. So if you're making mask lanyards to sell in your Etsy shop, or maybe you want to give them for gifts, these printables are such a nice little tag. It just makes it look a little more professional, a little nicer, and she is giving all of my viewers a code for 25% off, which is so generous. I'm telling you, Anna has the most amazing printables. Go check out her store. The code is SAINT25. So use that code to get 25% off your very own face mask lanyard printable. As always, thank you so much for stopping by the Le Petit Saint Crochet YouTube channel. I really hope this super simple face mask lanyard pattern tutorial helped you out. That is a mouthful to say. As always, I would love it if you gave me a like, if you would subscribe to my channel, and also if you would hit that bell so that you will receive notifications every time I hit publish on a brand new video. As always, stay safe and let me know if you make this project. If you want to tag me on Instagram at Le Petit Saint Crochet or you can use the hashtag. I have a hashtag now. I feel so official. It is hashtag Le Petit Saint Crochet. Happy stitching.